Kudalit is a mostly forgotten character in oral history, but one all of us ought to know a little about. This remarkable Mongolian warrior, horseman, and undefeated wrestler was a great-grandchild of Genghis Khan. Born to Kedu Khan, a descendant of the third son of Genghis, Kudalun was born sometime around 1260 AD and was raised with 14 brothers. And when they were young, they spent their time riding, perfecting their skills with the bow, fighting, and learning the art of battle. And as a part of that, Kudalun became highly proficient as a wrestler in the traditional Mongolian style. Undefeated. Challenged over a thousand times, Kudalun was undefeated. No losses, no split decisions, all wins. Wrestling is a very serious sport in the Mongolian culture. And unlike most wrestling today in the world, the competitors didn't worry about size or classification by weight. They, they just wrestled grabbing each other by the arms or waist and attempting to throw their opponent to the ground. And once any part of the body of a grappler, except the feet, touched the ground, the match was over. To keep it interesting, the wrestlers would often wager a horse, or several of them, to go to the winner of the match. And Kudalun ended up with a lot of horses. As the time passed, Kudalun's parents became concerned. So focused on riding, archery, and wrestling, this outstanding and proven warrior and military strategist had taken no spouse. And being of the family of the Khan, there were plenty of highly attractive possibilities. This true competitor made an unusual declaration about who would be chosen. They had to win in a wrestling competition with Kudalun, and Kudalun didn't lose, and certainly wouldn't throw a fight, not for any reason. There was one bold and courageous suitor who challenged Kudalun with the proposition that if Kudalun won, the prize was 1,000 horses, and if the challenger won, it was a wedding. And when the wedding occurred, important strategic alliances could be made to strengthen both kingdoms. If the proposal was accepted by Kudalun, well, Kudalun wasn't getting any younger, and the pressure within the community was beginning to build for a marriage to take place. So an agreement was reached with the parents, and for the sake of alliances in the kingdom, the match would be thrown. The stage was set for an epic match. Just one of the boys. Okay, let's take a breath here. Before you hear the outcome, it might be important to clarify one important thing. Kudalun was the king's daughter. <laughs> this incredible warrior, amazing horseman, and fierce competitor was a girl. A powerful and unique woman who excelled in what was traditionally a male-dominated world. But in the Mongol society of the time, she was quickly becoming an old mate. It was most unseemly that the king's daughter was unwed. Back to the wrestling match. The princess had agreed to throw the match to get married to support her beloved father. But as the contest progressed, Kudalun found she didn't think much of this prince so instincts kicked in, and she kicked her suitor's butt, destroying the chance for a marriage with him, but joyfully taking his 1,000 horses. This impressive woman lived life on her own terms at a time when doing so was unheard of. Her prowess was described in the writings of Marco Polo. He observed that during the battles, she would often remain on her horse at her father's side advising him on the battle. And then, suddenly, she would break away from him and ride into the thick of the fighting. Marco Polo penned this observation, quote, 
Not a knight in all his train played such feats of arms as she did. Sometimes she would quit her father's side during battle and make a dash at the army of the enemy and seize some man thereout as deftly as a hawk pounces on a bird and carry him to her father. End quote. An act she repeated often enough to worry those who fought against her clan, as the unfortunate soldier was usually tortured for information and then killed. Did she marry? Well, eventually Kudalu let go of her requirement that were she to marry anyone, they must first beat her in a Mongolian wrestling match. And finally, she did something a woman of royal birth could seldom do. After having suitors chosen for her and alliances pushed, she chose her own mate. In 1301, her father passed, and he wanted her to take over the kingdom as his heir. She refused, once again going her own way, and left that responsibility to her brothers. By 1306, Kudalun was also gone, passing at the age of 45 under mysterious circumstances. Perhaps, as some say, those 14 brothers remained threatened by her presence. So here's the ounce. Each of us is unique, though we are strongly influenced by our DNA and the environment and society we live in, we can, with courage, break through the precast roles assigned to us. But there will be a cost for such a trailblazer. There are three questions to answer when breaking from traditions and societal expectation of any kind. One, can it be done? Two, should it be done? And three, are you willing to pay the price for breaking from the path. And that's it. An ounce submitted for your consideration. Well, look, you're still here. Hope you enjoyed this little episode. And if you did, why don't you do something simple that would really help us? Go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe button and share it with your friends and we'd appreciate it. Thanks.